Good afternoon. My name is Jim Conlon. Welcome to the latest edition of the RCB Radio Sports Show, live at 92.5 and 94.8 FM and online at www.rcb.ie. Tonight is a special show. It's uh, county final time in, for 2021 in Clare uh, GA. There's two finals down for decision and obviously the showpiece uh, finals uh, uh, Jack Daly is an offer uh, for the senior uh, game and obviously the Michael Talty Cup is an offer then for the intermediate uh, game as well. Uh, a pivotal uh, encounter for Erog is their first uh, county final since uh, 2014. Can Moriar in contesting uh, numerous uh, finals uh, this decade uh, another uh, a final appearance for them. In the intermediate then it's uh, an appearance from last year's beaten finalists uh, Corif Ben are going up against uh, Dysart and Kildysart have been in numerous finals in the intermediate grade for the last year. But it's senior where we start at the moment and I suppose Seamus, Kilmoria, Bricken and Aerog, um, if you said to me, if you said to people in the punditry and people general footballing public in Clare that there could be a possibility of a Kilmoria, Bricken versus Aerog uh, uh, final on the cards of 2021. That wouldn't have shocked many, and I suppose people would say, yeah, that's a, a strong possibility, and uh, if Aero can fulfil their potential, thus it's come to pass. Yeah, it has come to pass, uh, and, uh, you know, everything is uh, everything is set up now for what promises to be a great occasion and a great game. You know, uh, both teams have impressed along the way. Uh, both maybe have had a few shaky moments as well, uh, and uh, that's Uh, it's typical kind of uh, championship um, stuff. Uh, you know, both have injury concerns, uh, uh, serious injury concerns, heading into the final as well. So you know, a, a lot of that will have uh, will have a big bearing maybe on what's going to unfold at Cusie Park. Uh, but uh, it's not a surprise that they're there. Uh, you know, there would have been a number of teams. Uh, I suppose uh, a number of teams uh, who would have fancied their chances of getting there. Uh, you know, when the draws were made. Uh, but these two teams would have been in most people's lips uh, as likely uh, to be in, in the shake-up. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, I suppose the season started uh, not so well for Kilmurray Abrican, and many people were saying, is this the end of an era, the end of a great group who had won a lot? Uh, you know, they struggled in the early stages of the league. Uh, I'd say even struggled to feel at times, but when the need was greatest, they came thundering into the into the, into the competitions, um, you know, won their closing games in the in the QZ Cup, uh, and got better with every game in the in the championship and, and in the final on merit. Uh, you know, your all started well and looked good from the world goal. Uh, then they lost uh, in round two, and there were question marks being asked. You know, uh, had they were they going to kind of uh, disappoint their fans once again? Because I suppose to be fair, they have disappointed their fans on a few occasions. Uh, in the last decade when they would have been fancied uh, to make further progress and didn't. But uh, they the bounced back from that loss to Tlandigad uh, and they, they have improved uh, along the way. Uh, and now they're all set for um, to try and, and, and bring the Jack Daly back to the county capital. So it has all the makings of a great game. And I, I certainly think we'll have one of the biggest crowds of modern times uh, on Sunday because, you know, numbers have been limited all along because of COVID restrictions. Uh, you know, uh, it's fairly open now uh, on Sunday and in that people can attend. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a big crowd and hopefully they'll be rewarded with a fine game. Mm -hmm. And Nicholas, if I can come to you, when we look at both teams uh, packed to the county final, uh, Kilmoria Bricken were in the group of five with uh, Milltown, Cracklow, uh, Core Clare, and uh, Innes Diamond. They were very business like men, like how they negotiated the group uh, straight from the off the opening uh, day draw with Milltown, but then decisive victories over in a Steinman uh, and Cracklow. And particularly when they were done and dusted, qualified, probably Core Clare probably gave them. Their biggest sort of challenge in the group. Then on to the quarterfinal, hotly tipped uh, to put Kilmehel to the sword. Uh, probably a bit shaky, a bit rusty that sort of day. And question marks were asked about uh, Kilmoria Bricken going into a county semi final, given how close Lissy Casey rang them the year before. And then they put on a, a, a performance against Lissy Casey to roll back the years uh, in terms of. Uh, 
efficiency and ruthlessness, uh, how the dispatch of uh, Lissy Casey early on. So when you look at Ken Murray's uh, path to the final and in, obviously, what's your own thoughts on that? Yeah, well, they didn't, they didn't have an easy route to the final, certainly. Like, that was a, that was a very strong group. And I suppose looking at them in the early rounds, you're thinking, you know, some team is going to take them. And, and you know, they seem to stroll kind of through through matches without setting the world alight or anything, you know. And, and I thought all the way up to the semi-final, you know, including the Kilmehill, the Kilmehill game, where they just seemed to do, to do enough. And, and we were asking, I was asking the question in the last, before, the, before the semi-final, do you know, were they getting tired? Would they have the legs? A lot of mileage in the club. And then they come out into that semi-final and, and, and in 20 minutes, they blazed uh, Lissy Casey, like, and, and, uh, and, and you're seeing the legs of Darren Hickey, well, you know, he's not an old man, but he's, you know, playing like a youngster. Uh, and, 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 and you're, you're seeing Matthew McMahon, the way he plays, and, and, and uh, in the Cotton. You know, these guys are around, uh, are around for a while, like Darren Cullinan, Darren, Darren Callan. So, you know, the semi final really surprised me. The power that came out of it against Lissy Casey, they don't open 20 minutes. They just missed Lissy Casey. And Lissy Casey, when the game wasn't over after 20 minutes, but it left. Lissy Casey with an awful uphill battle to climb. And you look at these guys who say, where after coming out of a really tough group after what is a long season? Like I mean, it's been a long, a long summer, a lot of games and a lot of hard games. You're saying, where did these fellas get that energy from? You know, and, and I suppose it's more than energy, it's know-how and how to win games. And 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 when they get into a semi-final, get into a final, they just seem to just uh click as a whole team. You know, they they the, the the football they played in the semi final was 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 unbelievable stuff like you know, so they've had a tough road to get here. They seem to start in kind of slow motion and all the way through the the group, you know. But they were they were safe all the time and and then they came out of, they really came out of their shell. So I I would have given I I I would I was really questioning there would they would they have the would they have that power would they have that enthusiasm, you know? And by God, they had to be the last day for certain. So I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have made them favourites, but I think after last day, I think you know they, they'll be going in as, as favourites. I'll be a great air oak team, a brilliant air oak team. But but can Maria Bricken have shown you this is how you play a championship? You take it easy in the easy. You know, I won't say take it easy, but you just get over, win these games in the in the preliminary rounds, and then you just get ready. A bit like Kerry in the old days when they would come through most of the championship and, and, and up in 10 all in the semi-final and they can press that button and, and go and that's the that's the secret of Kim Murray Abrikin and it is a secret because I don't know how to do it uh, before I go on to John and Don now for the Kilmory Abrican uh, perspective and Airog perspective, uh, Seamus, just on Airog's path uh, to the county final, first day out uh, against Lacey Casey, they put on a performance to really lay down a marker and said, wow, Airog have arrived. The second day out, uh, they were sort of flat maybe, and uh, Clundy Gad obviously got over the line in a hard sort of scrap. They sort of outfought maybe a rogue, out taught a rogue, that sort of day. A rogue then coming in the final day then were against Dunbeg were very uh, efficient how they disposed of uh, Dunbeg and a wily sort of Dunbeg outfit. Then on to the quarterfinal, everyone tipped it would be a 50-50 game between themselves and Ennis Diamond and uh, they seemed to be able to counteract Ennis Diamond's game plan and obviously, get, when the Simon didn't have a plan B, they were able to flip that on its head. Uh, the semi final, then everyone was talking about Brickens, uh, Brickens disposing of Meltdown, Brickens going into this unbeaten. And it was a case really of experience that we saw a maturing Erog uh, uh, against an inexperienced sort of Bricks, Brickens outfit. It was almost like uh, Erog had come of age in terms of maturity that stage. What do you make of Erog's uh, path to the final? Is it. Is it uh, they had the bump in the road, but is are they been going up that curve, uh, the ladder, fair rapidly ever since then? Yeah, they had a bump on the road, but uh, you know we have to remember that uh, Aero were uh, busy uh, for the last three months playing, holding a football championships, and a lot of the same players were involved in both. Uh, you know, and the, 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 that puts serious pressure on players, and it's a big demand uh, on players to, 
week in, week out uh, to be playing championship and to have to turn it on each week. So, um, you know, they had the, the, the stats, as you say, with a, a, a comfortable win over Lissy Casey. Uh, Clandigad lost their first round to Dunbeg, which was maybe a bit of a shock. So Clandigad needed to get something uh, in, in round two. Uh, and uh, I'd say Clandigad were really focused on, on, on that clash with their over in round two because they simply had to win to keep their hopes uh, of being in the concluding stages alive. So, you know, that so in, in, in round two. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's a probably a wake-up call for Aerog, and they haven't looked back really since, uh, you know, they've been well-focused, well-organised. Um, Shawnee Buckley is in with them this year, coaching, uh, the, the team coach. Um, new man to coaching at that level, but a very experienced player. Uh, you know, he played with and uh, mentored uh, Drumcolor Bradford uh, in Limerick for, ma- for many years. Uh, played with Limerick, played for Munster. So he's an experienced uh, player and he knows what's involved. And has been stationed in Clare uh, for a number of years in, in his role as a Garda Shikana. So he would have maybe seen a lot of games in Clare and know what's, what's uh, involved in football in Clare and uh, know the club scene fairly well. So that would probably have given him a bit of an insight as well. Um, you know, you've had all, you've had all that. Uh, but now going into Sunday's game, obviously the questions are, can Aero continue to show that kind of form? Uh, I, you know, to me, the big question about... This final is um, who will be out or who will be in from an injury point of view. You know, Gavin Cooney is a key player for Aero. Uh, he's carrying an injury at the moment. Uh, there's doubt about whether he'll be able to play or not Sunday. He missed the hurling game last week uh, and certainly was a loss because based on his performance in the hurling against Six Man Bridge in the quarterfinal, he was certainly a loss last week. Uh, Aidan McCarthy has... Um, hobbled off, if you like, in the last two games uh, against Lissy Casey in the semi-final with Kilmurray and last week in the hurling. Uh, you know, and he's a key player for for Kilmurray. So if if either of those two fellas are out, or if both are out, uh, how will that affect um, the, the performance of the, of the team that will be missing, whoever may miss out? So to me, that's going to be a key question and that's going to have a big bearing on how this final is going to go. Uh, if I can come on now to you, uh, Donald, uh, a rogue sort of viewpoint. I know your own son, Conal, is lining out there as a uh, uh, centre back. But uh, in terms of optimism uh, around the Aero camp this year, uh, in terms of noses and talking to Conal, was there sort of a, a bit of buzz? It was almost felt like these boys were growing up, that they had the knocks, the bumps, the digs that were thrown at them for the last sort of one or two years of not made, not pushing on uh, with all their under-21 sort of success. Uh, do you feel maybe that this year the, the leaders really stood up in their own and said, right, we're not going to make the same mistakes that we've made in previous years? Uh, good evening, everybody. I think actually, Jim, uh, some of the lads have hit the nail on, on the head there. Like Air Oak have, have had some success at underage level. But I mean, underage level success is one thing. Uh, this, is the, this is the big field and the big game and this is the man's game and the big day. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, at this level, uh, they are inexperienced uh, from a county final, a senior final perspective. Um, they did have a great start against Lissy Casey in the championship. Uh, it just, well, it's credit, I suppose, to the championship itself that uh, Clondagad beat them in the second round and Clondagad were fighting relegation. It just shows you, uh, you know, uh, the competition uh, is strong and there's not much between teams really on any given day. The two semi-finals I thought were interesting because, to be fair uh, to, to the, the, the victors that day, I don't think either Lissy Casey or Breckens would be happy with how they turned out that day. And I think they would both be disappointed looking back on, on their own performance that day. Um, so it's hard to gauge where both teams are at going into the final, actually, because the semi-final performances uh, flattered them, I believe. Um, there's a great buzz around the town. That's fantastic to have such a buzz around the town. And there's a buzz uh, that we haven't had, you know, for seven or eight years. Um, the team, uh, the, the injury concerns are there. Gar- uh, you know, Gavin uh, was a huge loss to the hurling last week. Uh, and uh, we're we're hoping, fingers crossed, that Gavin uh, will make an appearance on Sunday. But um, likewise, I suppose on the other side, uh, you, I wouldn't be ruling out any of the McCarthys ever. Okay, I want to see them uh, in a cast uh, before I think that they they will show up. Um, I think Aerog have matured. The hurt for the last number of years, you know, 
And there has been a lot of hurt and a lot of disappointment, and they have failed uh, to get over the line. So it's a big challenge then for them this year. First final, like I say, for most of them, uh, seven or eight of them, you know, dual players uh, in out every Sunday for the last, you know, I don't know, six or seven or eight Sundays, maybe ten Sundays. So um, if they show up, you know, they're, they're in with a fighting chance, but they're against a team that knows how to win, that grinds out victory. So I think whoever makes the strongest start the next day will probably end up uh, uh, victorious. Uh, John, if I can come on to you, I suppose, uh, Kilmoria Bricken, uh, there's no secret uh, for your success in terms of county finals. Uh, you're there on merit because you deliver time and time out again. And I suppose at the start of the year, people are looking at Kilmoria Bricken and they said, right, when they heard the news, Dermot Coughlin, the misfortune gone with another long term injury, Shane Hickey then going over uh, out for the year. Uh, as well, people were, were saying to themselves, maybe Noel Down stepped away, Ian McInerney stepped away, Michael Hogan stepped away. They were saying to myself, who's going to come in and sort of fill those sort of boots? Is it going to be a one-man show in terms of Keelan trying to deliver on his own for uh, Kilmurray at Brick? Now, Keelan's had an outstanding championship, but it's almost feel like the cogs have come in and the wheel has kept spinning in Kilmore Brick and it's almost next man up mentality. So while Dermot and Shane are big losses, it hasn't really uh, been shown on the field so far this year for you. Um, I suppose when you just when you list off the injuries there, you know, we, we also have um, another upcoming young fella there that's, that has a long term dear McKing. Well, dear, dear, dear McKing. And you know, um his name's again Keith King and you know he he has kind of hung up the boats as well but he's I think he's taken up the coaching there with with Lizzie Casey, so with the with the youngsters down there, like so. There, 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 two changes, like. But um, we have to, I suppose, you know, when the draw was made, it looked at, like the group of this, and the game with Milton was so tense and shaky. There was hardly a score in the first quarter, like you know, it's, and you know they moved along, and it was like game by game, and it was hard to judge what was going to happen next, like. And even the first half against Curry Clare, Curry Clare had put up a serious performance. Like, and you know, maybe Keelan, as you say, the one man show, he got he got he got a goal that day that kind of you know took took the game away, but it wasn't it wasn't a big victory against Curry Clare. Um, you know, in his diamond, caught us twice before. Um, one year we didn't even get to the quarterfinals, you know, it was in his diamond beat us. So there was a certain amount of respect. For the opposition as well. Um, likewise with Lizzie Casey, you know, Lizzie Casey put three goals past past them last year. Um, tight tight game again, and you know, been down the players that from last year as you mentioned there, Dermot and Shane, like and the few guys that had had left the panel. It's 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 um it was a game that nobody really knew which way to go. Um, but from the terms of the group of debt, the three teams that came out. It was, a, as it was mentioned there earlier as well, about the competition. The competition that's there, you can see when it got to the semi finals that the group of death, you know, Mil Milltown, Innes Diamond, um, you know, Cratlow, all the big teams that were in that group. It was the teams from the other group that um, that were knocking the door for to get into the knockout stages, the semi finals, and the final. Um, so last year, again, our game with Herog, you know, Herog were kind of. On top, we got two goals in, in quick succession that kind of gave us gave us the edge there in that game as well. So, a few players that we had last year that maybe weren't on the starting lineup are back, baby, that bit fitter this year. You know, in in the Cotton is go, it has been going well. Michael the wire is knocking about there as, as well. Like so, it's it's going to be a hard one to call, um, but. It's like the older guys are running on the younger guys, like you know, uh, one young player this year, you know, uh, Joe Campbell, like you know, 18. So we're kind of maybe stretching from 18 up to 39 in an age profile. So, on the other hand, the older guys, some of them are very good at running on the younger fellas, like so. It's like as if they're, they're team building with on the field as such, like you know, mm. uh, Jer, if I can come on to you now, Jer, and I suppose. You've been involved in management at, at, 
at, at senior club championship level in uh, Clare, you've gone up against uh, both Rogue and uh, Kilmaria Bricken, whether it be QZ Cup, whether you might have met him in the championship as well. When you look at these sort of two outfits, uh, what's the particular lines that sort of are the battlegrounds that jump out to you? Do you to look at that Rogue half back line or do you look maybe at the, the scoring threat of Kilmurray or Bricken, the inside line of Canlan and Sexton? What sort of jumps out to you if you were a manager that you would single out as the two strengths of both sides? Well, um, first of all, I, I think it's a, it is the makings of a, a cracking county final. I suppose just the, the two best teams in the county um, are there. Uh, both teams have, um, have, have great individual players. Um, I suppose to, to, to answer your question, I suppose um, for, for their own point of view, um, how they'll be able to handle Keelan Sexton will be crucial and uh, who will um, who, who to put on him. He is an exceptional player, um, a great leader and I suppose um, that, that how they can handle him will have a big bearing on the game. I suppose for the game itself, as Seamus and, and, and Donald have touched on, I think the injuries are going to have a huge bearing. If both teams have a full complement to play <clears throat> to, to, to play with, as in having um, Aidan McCarthy available and Gavin Cooley, I just think that um, I just think that Kilmore or Brecken will just have too much too much for our rogue. Um, I was just hugely impressed by him. Uh, in their semi-final, they, they, they have a great culture and uh, a great honesty within the group. There's no egos. Um, you know, you, you'd have to admire <clears throat> Kilmore and Brecken and the work that Hearts and, and, and the backroom team have done. Um, I suppose the, the, the Gavin Cooney will be a huge threat for our rogue if he's available. How will they handle Darren O'Neill, Mark McInerney? There's so many subplots, you know, um, I'm sure Marty McMahon will have a busy day uh, minding that D. And, um, but I, I think on, uh, with the experience they have and, and the know-how and the unbelievable players Kilmurray have, I just think they will be very, very hard to beat on Sunday. Hmm. And uh, I suppose, uh, Brian, if I can come on to you, I suppose that's the long-term goal for Cora Finn, obviously, in the future, in the next 10 or 15 years, to, to get to the stage uh, where uh, Kilmoria, Bricken and Erog are at. But as a neutral, when you look on uh, in terms of this game as a football supporter, does it excite you, uh, this prospect of uh, probably the two farm teams going up against each other? Yeah, Jim, absolutely. Like, you know, I think it, it is going to be a very fascinating contest. Um, I expect it to be very close, you know. Um, like, we all know, like, there is very much um, doubts about certain players. Like, so I suppose the question people are asking is who's going to play, who's up going to play. So I think both Aiden McCarthy and Gavin Cooney, like, they are both key players for both of the teams. And if one of those players didn't have to make it, I think, it will be a huge blow. So hopefully both those players are fit and hopefully both teams will be able to learn out with all the players available. Like we all know about Tim Maria Brickell, like they're very experienced, you know, they have a mixture now of youth experience, like the John Hickey in the back, Matthew McMahon, Keelan Sexton up front. I know he's not that old, but he's around a long time now, but Keelan is probably one of the players of, of, of the championship at the moment. But like Tim Maria Brickell, like, they have the farm team in the county over the last number of years, and they, and, and they have the cuteness like, to win games that are close games, you know. And then on the other side, you have Erog, who I think are a very balanced outfit, like, you know, they have Aaron Fitzgerald in, in, the, in the full back line, Kieran Russell, Conan Hennepin, and halfbacks, Darren O'Neill, he's a fine midfielder. And then you have a fine, you, you have a fine football line, you know, of, um, of Talty, um, um, uh, uh, Mark McInerney. And of course, Devin Cooney. But, you know, I think if they all click on the day and if everything goes right for them, I think the townies might just sneak by a point or two, but it's going to be very, very close. And just to sort of round off our coverage on the senior final before we move on to the intermediate, I'll come back to you, Seamus, and I'll come back to you, uh, Nicholas, obviously, the neutral perspective, obviously, uh, Donald will be siding for uh, Erog and John will be siding uh, for uh, Kilmore at Brickin. So, uh, 
Seamus, in terms of coming down the home stretch, you think this is going to be a battle that's going to go to the wire? And if it goes to go to the wire, how do you see uh, who's going to be ha- coming out of the trenches with uh, two hands on the Jack Daly? Yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be very tight. I think it's going to be a very tight contest. I think we all agree that much depends on uh, the fitness of Gavin Coney and Aidan McCarthy. They have both played key roles in getting the, their teams to this stage of the championship. And if either or both were uh, were ruled out, uh, it would represent a massive blow uh, to, to either side. Um, you know, in, in the modern game and at this time of year where weather conditions are deteriorating, uh, you know, it was very difficult last weekend for the holders of the clubs involved with the wind and rain. Uh, and uh, free takers are very, very important in this weather. And arguably, two of the best free takers kicking off the ground in the county at the moment are Keelan Sexton and Darren Kellner. They're, they're massive. I don't think, uh, I'd say between them, they missed one free maybe uh, in the semi-final. And, uh, you know, if a rogue will have to be very, very disciplined uh, and not give away any frees inside 50 yards because here you have two fantastic free takers. Now, Gavin Cooney is a very good free taker. Mark McInerney, very good free taker at the other side. But Dan Callan and Keelan Sexton uh, are great dead ball kickers of the ball. Uh, and I think Dan Callan might have surprised a lot this year with his accuracy. He has a powerful lift foot. Uh, and uh, I, I think that in a tight game, uh, the conversion of any freeze conceded uh, could prove crucial. Uh, I think it's going to be awful close, uh, given that there are two full teams. And I think it was a Brian mentioned there about the, uh, or Bobby, about the, the role that Martin McMahon will have in defending the D. Uh, I think if you asked any club in this county at the moment, who would they like to have in that position? I'd say, there'd be unanimous choice of Matthew McMahon. He's unbelievable uh, in that role. Uh, and it's going to be very hard to get past him. He's a, he's, he's a fantastic leader of the team. Uh, you know, he's a very experienced player, as we all know. Uh, he can go field and score, as he did uh, in the semi-final against my old club. Uh, you know, so um, it's going to be very hard to get past him. And I, I just think that it's in a tight game, uh, can Murray's know-how and we have seen that in the last seven or eight years. Their know-how in win- to win games uh, has stood to them. Uh, now, that said, I'd be the first to admit that Aero have some of the most talented footballers in the county at the moment. And if, uh, like, to me, uh, Kieran Russell has been outstanding this year in both hurling and football. He's been absolutely outstanding in every game, as has Adam Fitzgerald. Uh, you know, and it's Kilmore are going to find it very hard to get past the two of them. But I just think that um, Kilmurray's a greater experience uh, of winning titles uh, uh, may just see them home on Sunday. I suppose, Nicholas, uh, to wrap up the senior coverage, so Seamus has voted for Kilmurray, John obviously Kilmurray, uh, Jared has gone for Kilmurray, uh, so we've Donal and Brian for Aerog. Do you sort of tie it up or are you seeing it? Uh, the, the, a triumphant uh, a day out for the men from West Clare? Yeah. I, I suppose I always go with the fibre I have to put on a bit. I find it very hard to bet against Kimori Abrikin. And all week I've been thinking about Kimori Abrikin and how and the, how they impressed me in the semi final. But, but as the, as we come nearer the day, I'm looking at a rogue and, and have a look a, look, a, t- a close look at it. That a rogue half back line. Who would want to be a half forward at a half back line? And and Dean Arden Fitzgerald in behind in behind him as well. And then I need a midfield. I, 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 Rogue have, have, have a couple of things on their side. They have a real pain over the last few years. And that's a great thing going into a final. They, uh, they also have youth uh, mixed in with experience, but they, they have a very youthful side. Now, I, I can't preempt and not a doctor rating. Gavin Cooney has had a longer recovery time and probably a better chance of making this final than, than Aidan McCarthy. And I hope Aidan, Aidan is actually in Asia to be. I hope he makes the game. Of course I do. But a week is a very short time to come back from a, from a hamstring. So I don't know. And they are pivotal. Both players, Aidan McCarthy is the real link man there. He links up, ties up the whole thing. He covers every blade of grass. He's, he's got some stamina. And, and then you've Gavin Cooney offers what he offers there to the attack for a rogue at Bush. Uh, I, I'll make a three all. I just think I was in town today. It was mentioned already. The, the buzz, it's like Christmas. Even side in, in his today with all the red and white flags and and there is a buzz, and I've met a few lads in talking football and really looking forward. They're really eager 
and, and, and I'm sure it's the same in Quinty and, 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 and one of the places, but uh, and Cork, but uh, you know, it's it, I, I just think maybe my mind has, has changed over and back. What I was with Kim Murray breaking all week, but I just give the nod to Rock on this one. Maybe maybe they come of age. This this particular team may come of age on Sunday. Well, uh, that will sort of wrap it up, and I suppose uh, for me in a way, it, uh, to the the sounds of you all there, we're definitely heading to a penalty shootout in a way. Uh, in terms of we might have a 5-4 penalty kicks uh, encounter uh, inside uh, Cusick Park. But we'll move on now to the other uh, showpiece of the weekend. That's the intermediate uh, county final. It, it gets uh, first uh, billing in terms of it's on tomorrow, uh, Saturday inside in Cusick Park. You'll see probably uh, from the outset two of the most fancy team in the, teams in the intermediate grade for the last no, number of years, uh, finally clash come county final day. They met in semi-final uh, last year. The, the core of fame were victorious uh, on that stage. Uh, Kildice would have contested so many uh, intermediate finals in the last decade. From the outside, people said if these two teams uh, don't avoid each other, that is probably the final that every footballing supporter wants in terms of an intermediate uh, showpiece. Uh, Seamus, it's come to pass. And like to what we saw in the two senior semi-finals, uh, how one-sided they were, the intermediate was no uh, was similar standard. Kildaisa were ruthless and Corfin were ruthless. Yeah, they both won their semi-finals comfortably. Uh, I suppose there was a, a certain similarity with the senior final in that uh, there are a number of players... Uh, who may not play, who may not get to play. Like, you know, Kildice are worried about the fitness of um, Rory, Rory McMahon, Seamus Casey. They both went off in their semi-final and uh, whether or not they'd be able to play, um, we don't know yet, but obviously they're two very important players to the club. Uh, Killian Mullins has been the current Finn fullback all year. He has uh, not so, uh, <laughs> the not so important matter of a serious uh, senior Holland relegation battle with his native Christine. Uh, on, uh, earlier on Saturday, and depending on how he'll come through that, if he'll have, if he'll be able to play a part, uh, you know, to represent, uh, if he's a missing to represent the blow to Cora Finn, and to and to mean that have to make maybe significant positional changes to, uh, to 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 cover for his absence if he's ruled out. So you have those questions as well heading into this, but certainly you have the two farm teams, the two teams that everybody predicted right from the get go this year. Uh, would be the, the, the last two standing, if you like, uh, for this title. Uh, they've met a few times uh, in recent times. Um, you know, in semi-final last year, I suppose a lot of people remember for the performance of Jamie Malone. You know, he was he sparkled that day, but he was in the attack. Uh, he has missed all this year up to three weeks ago because of an injury he picked up in the first round of the National League with clear way back at the start of the year. Uh, I think we all know that... His, uh, his talent and what he's capable of doing. He's done it on, on the national stage and had it been an Oscar nominee as a result of what he's capable of doing. So uh, he's a key player. Uh, Eamon McMahon has been outstanding in this championship and he's a player I think that we're going to see a lot of with Clare over the next couple of years. You know, he's a young player coming through, um, has been part of the county panel and has been making a name for himself, I suppose, in the year just gone by. So there's, there's talented players, there are many talented players on both sides and experienced players on both sides. Uh, you know, you have the two Cahill brothers, uh, Garrod and, and, and Dermot, uh, in, in the court of Finn attack. Uh, so you have Dermot O'Donnell, another player who has been making a mark for himself this year, uh, talented footballer, uh, well able to score uh, in the Kildice line up. So, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot uh, going for both teams uh, and it's a very hard one to call, I suppose, Cora Finn will be seen as having a, the slight edge because they they have won um, the, the, the semi-final last year against the same opposition. Now, subsequently, they lost the final to St. Joseph's. So they have the heart of having lost the last year's final. Kildice would have, have the heart of having lost a couple of finals in the preceding years to that. You know, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that either team is well capable of holding their own at senior level. Uh, you know, they have talent, they, they have a lot of talented players in their, in, in their lineup. So uh, whoever comes through, I think, won't be out of place at senior level. Um, this has really the makings of a, of, of, of a great contest and a, you know, there won't be kick, kick of a ball in it, I, I'd say, at the end. And I you know, I wouldn't be surprised uh, you know, if they had to go at it again because uh, they're that, they seem to be that evenly matched. Uh, and as is, you know, they have the players, both sides have the players capable of making this a game to remember. 
<laughs> Nicholas, uh, awards, Seamus used an award that's coming up an awful lot when we mentioned uh, Kild uh, Kildysert and uh, Corfin is hurt. Hurt. Uh, Corfin felt the hurt last year. Kalaiser felt the hurt now uh, for a number of years as well in terms of the intermediate grade. In terms of the county final, then, how important is it for teams like that who've experienced county final day where it hasn't gone well for them, where they might have underperformed? That start, that opening first quarter, the first water break in terms of uh, getting out, hitting the blocks, hitting the traps in Cusick Park from the off and maybe coming out there, setting a pace and maybe dictating uh, the terms of the contest. You imagine that both sides, the, co the confidence, if, if it goes against them, it's very brittle in terms of things don't work out their way. So who needs that start more, do you feel, uh, Kildeister or Corfin? Uh, well, I think both of them need a good start uh, you know, in, 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 in the final. It's vital that you get a good start. I think, and you know, hurt is is the thing that you that you say that is was these two teams certainly would be, you learn more from pain than you will ever learn from 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 maybe good memories, you know, because because uh, you you know, Corofin last year look back in that final and they say, you know, what have we got to get right? What do we do wrong? And and, and likewise, and likewise, Kildaisert. So I, I suppose the, the score is even there when it comes to uh, two teams that have been in finals. And could have and, and uh, have been in finals that they could have won, or maybe that they didn't play as well as, as they expected to play. So, like, I mean, it's, it's vital for both these teams uh, to, to to come in and 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 to get a good start. And 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 uh, you know, could both of both of them need that good start? You know, you look at Kildare. Like, I mean, they like to keep O'Connor and Andy McMahon have to take a grip at midfield if Kildare are, are going to are, are going to you know uh, cause problems. But uh, on the other side, in your know, Kevin Keane and Fionn can't see like the most luches either, you know. But uh, I suppose the the, the, the nice of defence will have to come to terms with, with, with the two Cahill brothers, and and Gerard Cahill was particularly good, and he links up well with his brother Dermot there in the forward as well. And if Gerard Cahill gets a bit of space, you know, he'll he'll, he'll hurt you uh, uh, very much. Killian Mullins is is vital that he is playing. Hopefully. He'll be able to he'll hopefully he'll be able to play. It's, it's a terrible situation for a captain of a team and for a fine player like him. I mean, he's a really he's a, he's a noble footballer, and he and and you know please, hopefully he will. And and I think uh, Corofin really needs him to be there and to be fit and 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 able to play. But there, there's nice players there in that in in that Corofin team. Robin Mounds is, is is probably better known for his Holland, but he's he's a fine footballer as well. And uh, you know they have a good all-round team, Corofin. Uh, um, but then, then, then you look at, at Kildaisert, you know, they have some of the best players in, in you know, at, 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 uh, you know, Emmett McMahon is, is a man who can win a match on his own and, 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 and wait to get those scores, like Conor Hassett and, and Luke McGrath and Seamus Casey they have in the half hour line. So, you know, it, 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 it is who's going to turn up on Sunday? Now, not just the start, but who's going to be able to maintain it for a full, for a full, set, for a full, for the full game? Which could could run into up to 65, 70 minutes, you know, and the field is going to be a little bit heavy, you know. So everybody it had to be fish and all hands at, at, at the pump. And like Seamus said, I you couldn't call this one. You you'd have to, you know, you would have to have the terminology knowledge to say who's going to win this one. I mean, Corofin have been have been have had a great year getting to this final, but the same can be said of of Kelly Dyson. And both teams have, have, have beaten all comers. And, and, and got to this final well on matters. They were both tipped, as Shabu said, at the beginning of the year to get to this final, you know, and it is the final, I suppose everyone wants to see, you know, to the two top uh, to be the teams in, 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 in the county meeting on, on, on Sunday in Cusick, uh, uh, sorry, tomorrow, Saturday. And, in, and uh, you know, there should be a huge crowd in for this one as well, a big crowd. Now the crowds can go back. We've been stared of, of big games and, and, you know, this is a great final and it's, it's one that deserves a big crowd. In. In there and uh, a, a, a great warm up for the for the, for the big game on Sunday as well. So um, I suppose there's hurt there for Corofin as well. They, they they were hoping to get to look at the Holland final, so they 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 bowed out of that at the, uh, you know against, against Rouen. And I'm sure that all those things are learning curves as well. Like you know, and uh, I think both teams will be well prepared. 
both teams are, 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 uh, are going to give it everything. And it's, you know, I'm really, really looking forward to these two games at the weekend. You know, it's, it's, it's a great time of the year, no county final time, and uh, really looking forward to going to the park tomorrow and kicking off the weekend. Uh, before I come to Brian and Ger for the Corfin and Kildarsar perspective, I'll just run through uh, both teams' uh, routes to the final. Uh, Kildarsar came through uh, Group 1. They had Kilfenora, Michael Cusix, and uh, Kilfenora, Michael Cusix, and the, the other team is uh, sort of uh, ringing my tail. But Liscanner. Liscanner, yeah. Liscanner, yeah. yeah. Who forget Liscanner? And <laughs> uh, obviously then uh, they met, uh, they, they came through that. Uh, Kildaiser were sort of victorious. They beat Shannon Gales then in the quarterfinal. And then they were victorious against Kilfenora in the semifinal. Uh, for Cora Finn, they came through a group with uh, Nave Owen, uh, Wolf Tones and uh, Cool Mean. They were victorious over Michael Cusix in the quarterfinal and in the disposed of O'Curries in the semifinal. And uh, Brian, if I can come to you first uh, in terms of uh, Cora Finn, I suppose last year you got to a county final. I suppose there was great buzz. There was great excitement. Uh, you sort of great plans. It didn't go well for you on the day. In terms of trying to regroup and go again, obviously you've new management this time around. Uh, players uh, that weren't available last year, they're underage now, they're are, are of age now, like some Marco Lachlan, Killian McGrory, Killian O'Connor. So what's it been like? Have you, have you treated it like a new season, a new campaign, given that you have an influx of new players and obviously a new management team as well? Was there real demands to get back where you were or to go one better or do you take it game by game? Yeah, Jim, I suppose that's true. I suppose, like, like you can't kind of change too far ahead now with the moment, like, you know, so it, it's really the case of, of one game at a time. Um, like we all know, last year in the final, like we didn't really show up at the final. We didn't really play it to our full potential. So that is kind of at the back of our minds the whole time, like you know that that we didn't do a sort of justice last year. So I suppose kind of everybody has been saying that we need to go obviously one step further this year, you know, and probably at the start of the season, probably most of the pundits and the experts in in, in the um, in Clare football would have probably said that Kildare and Coughing would be the two teams in the final. Now, like both teams, like have a, had, had, had good battles over the last number of years, and even last year, we actually played twice last year. And the first round was in the park, and that was a very close affair. And Kildare uh, came out on top by one point. I think it was 13 points to 12 uh, around that. And then we happened to meet again in the semi final, and I think our performance in the semi final was definitely our best performance in the whole year, especially in the first half. I think we scored maybe. A goal in six in the first 15 minutes, like you know, and Jamie, as you said there before, was very good at there, like you know. But like we have a few new players, as I said, this year, like a few of the minors now coming through, the likes of Matt Lockson, as I said, and Kilian O'Connor, Kilian McGoy. Like there's five of the six balls are under 21, and I think seven of the whole team is under 21 as well, like you know. So but at the same time, because I should have their aces as well, like you know, the likes of Emmett McMahon, of course, is an up and coming player and then they have the experience, heads of Robert Ayers and Gold and Shane McInnes, you know, so like they would be very hard like, to grind down, like, you know, and like we have a few injuries out as well, like, you know, Colin Rice is a doubt to injury, Shane Malone is a doubt to injury, you know, so like we need all our players on the field, like, to have a chance tomorrow, like, you know, but I think both clubs realize now that this year is very important, like, to win it this year because. Who wants to play intermediate champs next year? I think the likes of Clarosh, Pro Clare, down intermediates. It's going to be very, very difficult to, to win it next year. It, it's going to be very difficult to win it tomorrow. But I think it's important for both clubs to win it tomorrow, like, you know, to avoid the big ones of, of Clarosh and Pro Clare next year. Uh, Ger, if I can come to you now for a Kildaiser perspective, you soldiered with Kildaiser for many a years. You've graced uh, the intermediate uh, final uh, stage before in the past. You've played senior football uh, uh, for, for Kildaiser in the past. You know what it takes to be up there. You know the hurt, obviously, of being down uh, in intermediate as well. Uh, 
Looking on now, a new management team gone in and Kildeister there as well this year. Noel O'Grady started taking on, uh, I suppose, a new voice uh, for the players, uh, a new management, a new backroom team. Is it almost a, a different sort of vibe? I was back around Kildeister during the week and I almost felt uh, it was low key. Uh, everything was sort of quiet, the sort of hysteria and hype that comes with a county final that maybe Kildeister uh, since that occasion before in the past that they're trying a, a, a bit of maturity in terms of not trying to get all too worked up about the scenario. It starts to feel a low key build up, but is that how Kildare sort of treated the year? Just take it game by game and not really uh, look beyond it. Oh yeah, that's it. Um, they have been taken game by game, and I suppose um, as as regards the build up, we had a very sad funeral um, locally um, on Monday where. Uh, a poor guy of 44, Barry Maloney, who plays juvenile with us back in the day, uh, unfortunately um, lost his battle um, with, with cancer. So it was a very sad week locally. And I suppose that uh, that um, that uh, took from, I suppose, the, <clears throat> the build up to the game, which I think, um, you know, um, which which happens. Um, I know the bookies have Corafin made a hot favours for tomorrow anyway, you know, and uh, which I kind of find uh, very surprising. Um, I suppose um, the weather will have a big bearing in the game tomorrow too. I think like last year's semi-final, the forecast is not very pleasant with um, with rain and and, and winds of um, uh, up to 27 kilometres an hour. So uh, you just hope that it won't make a game of two halves like which... Um, which probably happened last year. Um, actually, as, as, as Brian said, we played twice last year, <clears throat> the first time in the park, and we uh, Finn got off to a very strong start again, like they did in the semi-final, but we were able to reel them in 13-12, uh, where in the semi-final, actually, we were um, we were scheduled to start that game. At, uh, we were selected at full forward, and I couldn't get off I couldn't get off the sitting room floor to go and even watch it because my back went into spasm. So um, I was gutted to miss it. But um, so to start, uh, Kildais will be will be hopeful that they won't give um, Corafin such a head start tomorrow. Um, as the lads have said, we'll say, I suppose, <clears throat> how Corafin will deal with him at McMahon and how how um, Kildais will deal, <clears throat> deal with Jamie Malone will have a huge uh, bearing on the game. I know from... Yeah, from as regards Emmett, he's he's an unbelievable club man as 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 well as a footballer. He's involved with us in the juvenile. He's pretty much at each session. The the kids idolise him, and we really appreciate him putting um you know so much work back into the club again. Um, last year, Jamie, sure he he was pretty much remarkable. Um, in the semi final, you know, I suppose we'd have been disappointed with the quality of ball that he was getting into him that. There wasn't more pressure put on the players out the field, we'll say, to, to prevent the perfect ball going into him. So um, I'm sure the lads will have learned from that tomorrow. Um, both both uh, teams will be will be in general very young, I would imagine. Both, uh, both Kildaiser and Corafin will have up to half their team that will be under 21s, you know. So, um, and most of them younger players have been on county county minor and under 21 teams over the last number of years. So it should make for a good quality game. Um, yeah, as, as to answer your question about the management, I definitely think that I suppose, um, I suppose that the, the new management team have freshened things up an awful lot this year. And um, I suppose from a player point of view, it's always great uh, to have a, a new voice coming in, you know, and uh, often just, they're probably telling you the same thing, but it's, 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 um, you know, it's it's it freshen things up here and they're coming from a different mouth, you know. So um we're very we're very hopeful in Kildaiser. Um if we believe if we if we um if we can show up tomorrow with the same fire and the same fight and the same intensity that we brought to the semi-final against Kilfenora, we believe we have a we have a, a very good chance. If we play like we did against Shannon Gales in the quarterfinal where we stood back, played on our heels, going over and back across the field, we'll be in big trouble. But if uh, if the boys come uh, with the attitude that they had in the semi-final, we think we think we'll be there thereabouts. 
if I can come to you, Donald, obviously you can look on at this in a, a, a neutral sort of perspective. Uh, two teams that would be fitting of senior football, no one doubts that. Uh, if Kildaisert uh, obviously playing in the QC Cup, we know of all Corfin's underage success competing in minor A football uh, finals as well. Hotly tipped to do well, very well this year in under 21A as well. So, uh, It'd be no shock uh, for any either of these teams to go up. People will say it's only a matter of time for both of them to make uh, the step up as well. How do you start to read this game and uh, in terms of the stories of what you've heard about uh, both clubs? Uh, it really is um, a game that could go anyway and sort of defining moments throughout the contest could swing it one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, both teams being so young, of course, and, and a county final being a, a big a big deal, you know, for, for, for teams, even though they have been there recently. But some of those new young players that you mentioned from Cora Finn uh, and uh, the Cora Finn forwards are very young and, and active and very well balanced. Um, I think the fact that they, that they narrowly lost the hurling uh, and that they've had, uh, you know, X amount of weeks to be concentrating on the football, uh, which you don't get really as a dual club usually, you know, uh, will be uh, to, the, to their advantage. Um, uh, sad to hear that, that Cullum and, and, and Shea are doubts because if their injury doubts uh, and, and, and with uh, Killian Mullins, you know, playing a game in the morning, their whole, their whole back six could be, could be rejigged uh, um, before the game begins at all. And, and uh, so if they have their best team out and, and if, if all of the players uh, are available to Corafin, uh, I think uh, Corafin could shade it. Corafin have lots and lots of up-and-coming players uh, and uh, super athletes with a great commitment. They, they know how to win underage. I know this is a step up for them, but uh, I, I'd be giving Corafin the shade here, even though... Great respect for, for Kildysert and the two McMahons and uh, you know McNeilises and all these lads are, are strong, strong players and they they they, they um uh, have shown that in the past. But um for this one, I I I think I I'd, I'd give give the shade to Curafin, maybe with Robin Mounsey from Rouen to score the winning score. Uh, John, if I can come out to you now, obviously uh, Kilmory a uh, Brickin, no stranger to, to pass. Uh, battles with uh, Corafin or Kildysert in terms of playing on the, in, in the league stages as well. So two teams uh, fitting uh, for senior football with Cor Clare and Kilrush obviously making the step down, uh, two teams going down. It almost feels that there's added pressure going into this final for, for both of them. And uh, how do you see uh, this game going? Is it a case of Kildysert trying to hold uh, Jamie and the two Cahals and then uh, Corfin trying to hold Dermot O'Donnell and Imus, and uh, which is which is which can you see either team doing? Yeah, it, it, you know, it's, you just mentioned trying to hold them because both both teams finished top of their, their groups and they, they put in high scores in all their games. But you you you'd have to, you'd have to look at um, what you mentioned. You named three players. Like sometimes you're talking in the senior games, we're holding one player, but when you're trying to hold three. Um, you know, em Emmett when he came on the the clear the clear scene there, like you know, he he really he really took wasn't afraid to take shots and on, on goal, like and scored some great points. And you know, likewise, I think it's fantastic to hear Jamie Lowen is, is coming back, like and he's a bit more time since the last game as well. So he's an he's another guy that's not afraid not afraid to take on and take, take a shot. But two very young teams, and you know. The high scoring, if they're going to try and stop the scoring, are you going to get a low scoring game? Depends on the weather conditions. For a Finn and Kildaisa are two teams who would never have been afraid to take on anybody. And for a Finn in particular, any time we did meet them in championship games, you know, maybe outside of one or two games, they they they, they did look to Kilmurray even as a senior team. But they they're not afraid. Um I think we should have left a the summary there to Brian because what he went through and what he was saying about the about the game is 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 um it shows the thought is there two teams one of them will go up uh you know already Tom would could have clear kill rush but you know the, the two best teams are in the final kill Dysert have done very well underage with minors and 21s and you know 
they, they have built themselves for years. They've been building for years and they're slowly coming through. Um, if Corofin have the injuries that, that has been listed there, it's, it's, going, it's going to be crucial. Like so, I, I would see the Cattles, you know, they're two exciting players. There's a lot, lot about them underage. Um, there's a young McRory. I saw him there a good number of years ago. He's now coming of age. So young teams, Dougie Hurley, I, one of his interviews I read, I think he's five, five, he's six forwards uh, under 21. So I you kind of hate to be running after those guys. So I expect a tight game, but if Corofin have the injuries, hopefully, you know, they, 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 both sides will go for full squad, but if they have the injuries, maybe Corofin. Kildaisa could share this one. Okay, so uh, in terms of that, so we've uh, a vote from the neutral uh, perspective, uh, uh, one each, and I suppose uh, obviously Gerard tipping Kildaisa and Brian uh, tipping Corfin. I'll come to you, uh, Nicholas uh, and Seamus, uh, to sort of wrap up the intermediate coverage. Nicholas, uh, we've talked an awful lot about these two teams uh, so far this year. Uh, who's your money on in terms of uh, Corfin Cor versus Kildaisa? But as you know, Jim, all I have is a fiver to spare. So they are my fiver. Um, if Jamie Malone, he, Jamie Malone didn't fit, look fit in the semi final for me. He looked like someone who was, who was just back from a serious injury, uh, even though he did have a, 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 a good, a sizable role to play. But he looked like somebody who was avoiding tackles and stuff like that. And he probably was. But he's a few more weeks under his belt now of recovery. And if he can come out, if he plays and he's fully fit, I, I, I would put my fiber on, 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 on Corofin, but it will be a very close game. And you know, hopefully the injuries won't be won't be won't be a factor. It's I, I was talking to Tony Kelly last week, Tony the hurler and um from footballer, uh, and he said to me he's never seen so many players injured as the past year. So that it's something clubs are going to have to look at and managers and trainers. Why are these players getting so many serious injuries? And every club has been affected. Uh, with these injuries and it's a sin to see great top class footballers not being able to, to play on Sunday or Saturday or Sunday if, if, they, if they don't get to play but it's, uh, that's another argument my favourite was on Cora Finn and I know due respects to Kira Dyson there'll be nothing in it Seamus uh, your thoughts? Uh, oh, yeah I expect it to be very very close I, I, again it's very difficult to call uh, last year in the semi-final uh, as I mentioned earlier, Jamie Malone caused all sorts of problems with Kildaisert. He was playing in the attack. Uh, in the semi-final this year, maybe out of necessity because Killian Mullins wasn't available, he was centre-back. Uh, Jamie can play anywhere, but are you, are you Robin Peter to pay Paul if he's in defence? Uh, are you, um, you know, is he going to be lost to the attack? Uh, uh, he, he is a key player. There's no doubt in the world about that, and he has the class to match it. Uh, but he has a lack of game practice, I suppose, this year, match practice, uh, because he missed the whole season up to two, three weeks ago. Uh, now, as Nicholas said there, he has a couple of weeks under his belt since the semi-final, so he will have sharpened up a lot more. Um, the two Cahals, very good up front, Robin Mounsey, Kenny McRory, uh, Killian O'Connor, they're all lively players, but they haven't maybe the experience of big-time days like the likes of Shane McNeilis, who has a key role to play. Uh, you know, the, there's a couple of uh, Ayrsons playing and they're very key players for Kildice. And Robert Ayers is a powerful goalkeeper. You know, he was the player senior goalkeeper first choice a couple of years ago. But he, uh, I suppose uh, he's been out of the scene because uh, he wasn't able to give the commitment, I think, he, because of where he was based with work. Uh, he's, he'll come up field, he'll kick a couple of points. He, he's a powerful long range free taker from 55, uh, 50, 55 yards out and well capable of scoring. Uh, there's pluses uh, and minuses, I suppose, if you like, on bo on, for both sides. Uh, I just think that uh, I'm assuming that both teams will have everybody ready come match time, come throwing time. Uh, maybe not Killian Mullins uh, with Corofin because he's playing with his own club at 12 o'clock, uh, you know, in the crucial hurling game. Uh, but I'm assuming they'll have everybody else fit. And I, on that basis, I'm kind of hesitantly saying that Cora Finn uh, looked to be that bit more balanced, uh, more evenly balanced, uh, and may just share it because of the pace of their attack. 
chapter full of text. But that said, dear Mother Donald and Emmett McMahon, they cannot be underestimated. They are true. They have been fantastic all year. They have kicked many great scores uh, for the for Kildaisert. Uh, and Corofin defence is going to have to be on its game to keep them out. But at this stage, uh, hesitantly, I would say Corofin maybe by a point. Uh, before we wrap up, lads, I'm just going to go around the table. A quick word, uh, just a quick name to for the player of who you've thought has been the player of the senior championship so far and the intermediate championship. So I'll just go, I'll just go with Seamus and Nicholas, uh, just go around the table, just one name, sort of. So some of the names mentioned for the senior championship have been the likes of Ian O'Connor, Keelan Sexton, Dara Cannon, Kieran Russell. So and then for the intermediate championship players being mentioned are the likes of um, Dear McCahill, Emmett McMahon, um, the likes of Garod Cahill, uh, Dear O'Donnell. So I come to you, Seamus, just two names, your player of the senior championship uh, in Clare this year and your intermediate player of the championship. Uh, many candidates in, in the senior, quite a number of candidates, I think, but uh, I would marginally say at this stage, Keelan Sexton. Keelan Sexton. Senior, for, for senior, senior. Yeah. And that would be marginally ahead of Kieran Russell, who has been fantastic as well. And in the, the intermediate champs? In the intermediate championship, uh, I would say it, it, on what I've seen so far, uh, Emmett McMahon. Emmett McMahon. Nicholas, uh, coming to you, same thing, senior championship and intermediate championship. Well, I'm not quite, I'm not copying Seamus, but I would I actually picked the two in my mind before when you said it. They were the two that came straight to mind, Emmett McMahon. And, 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 and Killian has had a fantastic year as well. You know, there's plenty more uh, players, but uh, they'll go with the same two as well, yeah. Donald, coming to you. Yeah, um, I, I couldn't disagree with Emmett. Uh, uh, from the senior championship perspective, I think Aaron Fitz has had a super year uh, uh, all year. He's been steady out, uh, uh, haven't conceded a goal yet, so time will tell, okay? So Aaron Fitz for the senior championship. Uh, John, coming to you, senior and intermediate. Um, I suppose with in, intermediate, like I, I mentioned his name earlier, Emmett McMahon. Um, on the senior, Keelan, Keelan is getting, you know, he has played very well this year. Um, so, Joe, you know, he's getting the scores as well. He's getting the freeze. Um, but behind behind Keelan, like, you'd, you'd have Matt McMahon and Joe, you know, so... But they probably the name one would be Keelan and Emmett. Uh Jarrah coming to you. <clears throat> yeah, uh, much the same as 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 um as the boys will say. Um there's been a lot of candidates for both, but um it's hard to look past Keelan and Emmett. Mm. And uh Brian coming to you lastly. Yeah, for senior another vote for Keelan Sexton and uh, intermediate. I know I'm biased, but I give my vote to go Cahill. Broad Cahill. So on the reflection there, just counting up the votes, uh, congratulations to, to Keelan Sexton being named RCB Sport uh, Player of the Senior Championship for 2021. And uh, congratulations to Emmett McMahon being named RCB Sport uh, Intermediate Championship of, of the Player for uh, 2021. I would like to thank our guests uh, today, a regular renowned sports uh, journalist uh, from uh, Claire Seamus Hayes, RCB sports anal analyst Nicholas Ring. Our guests this evening uh, representing Kilmoria Bricken GA Club John Brew, representing Aerog uh, GA Club Don Law Hannafin, representing Kildicer GA Club uh, Ger Bobby Kelly, and representing Corfin Club uh, Brian Gillespie. On behalf of RCB Radio Sport West Clare, live at 92.5 and 94.8 FM and online at www.rcb.e, I would like to wish the best of luck to Kildicer and Corfin. Finn tomorrow in the, in the intermediate football uh, decider and uh, may the best team win and I would also like to wish the best of luck to Kilmoria Bricken and Air Rogue Sunday uh, in the senior decider for the rights for the Jack Daly may also the best uh, team win uh, that concludes this week's episode of RCB Radio Sports Show this uh, episode will go out on our YouTube channel later on this evening roughly at around 10pm uh, it will go live on our YouTube channel. You'll also be able to listen back live on air next Monday night from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That concludes this week's episode of RCB's Radio Sports Show. For me, Jim Conlon, good night. God bless and enjoy a great weekend of club uh, football. Take care.